r slash confessions by reddit aliens warning may contain disturbing content i have never been in a car accident and i'm in my 30s in the past few years i can think back to two times that i had driven my car when i shouldn't have walking to the car i thought i was sober enough to drive but i had no knowledge of my bac i didn't swerve or have trouble staying awake but that doesn't really matter no one should drink and drive i'm lucky i did not get pulled over or I could have gotten myself in serious trouble. I thought about turning myself in, but I have no evidence, just my own judgment, and it's something that I'm trying to be mindful of in the future. Last time I went to a gathering, I had someone else drive, so I wouldn't have to worry about it. I've read horror stories where people change their lives forever just because they don't want to be inconvenienced. When I was 15 and very stupid, I was hanging out with some of my friends from outside of school. We felt like smoking some weed, but weed can be somewhat hard to come by where I live, especially at that age. There was this one guy who went to school with me. I guess we were sort of friends, but in truth, I only really tolerated him because he always had access to weed through his older brother. Anyway, I sent him a text asking if we could buy some because he only lived just around the corner. He replied he had gone away for the weekend with his family and that I'd have to ask someone else. After exhausting our options, we figured the only way we're getting the stuff was to try to get into this guy's house and have a look for his stash ourselves, thinking it would be no stress because his family was away. After scoping out the house, at the level of 15 years old, we noticed the front door had been left unlocked. Retreating for a bit to gain some courage, we eventually proceeded to enter the house. I clearly remember getting halfway down the main stairway around 15 seconds in before hearing the shriek of a burglar alarm. Anyone who has been in the house while one has been triggered, accident or not, will know how horrifying that sound is. We bolted out the house, leaving the front door wide open and ran as far as our lungs could take us before holding up in a friend's granny flat for hours too scared to leave, awaiting a knock at the door for some sort of officer. As criminals always return to the scene of the crime, we went back the next morning and the door was still wide open. I lived in fear for weeks, knowing I would easily be identified if he had any cameras and was outrageously awkward at school following the event and to this day with the friend. I have posted this on other subreddits and have been attacked for being an evil person. I do feel some guilt about it and know my sister would be weirded out if I told her. It worked out okay, but I wonder how it would have felt if it didn't. Here's what happened. I helped. My kid's sister, she was 23, just started grad school, become a mom when she really wanted to get pregnant but felt guilty about the timing being impractical. She had just gotten married that year and was still in school, but getting married gave her a bad case of baby fever. She told me she hated using condoms during her fertile days. She was using a fertility monitor and would fantasize about the condom breaking to help her stay in the mood when they had sex. I asked her if she'd ever thought about just lying to him and telling him she's safe so she could enjoy her fantasy for real. She said it was really tempting, but she'd feel guilty the whole time and then worry about what if she got pregnant for real. Here's what I did. A few months after they were married, I was staying with them overnight at their apartment and on an impulse, I decided to be nosy and check her fertility monitor. I had bought it for her as a shower gift and it was just like mine. When I saw it was flashing red, predicting ovulation, I couldn't resist the chance. I switched hers with mine, which was safely green, meaning no protection needed for sex, and I made sure to empty their box of condoms in the trash just in case. I made sure they had a lot to drink that night, and her husband insisted on having green night sex with her when he saw my device showing green on her nightstand. She knew something had to be wrong, because even drunk, she knew where she was in her cycle. I could hear her through the wall, protesting a little. They were both pretty loud, and it was a tiny apartment. At first it was, honey, we can't, not without a condom. And she tried to tell him the monitor was wrong. Then the temptation got the better of her. Soon the whole apartment was filled with the sounds of my sister, very enthusiastically, finally getting to enjoy her fantasy of no condom when I'm ovulating sex. The next morning they had another go at it, and she was glowing and all smiles at breakfast. When I switched the monitors back, I noticed she hadn't even taken her temperature that morning. I'm sure it's because she didn't want to risk that green light changing colors 
until she got one more chance to enjoy the opportunity. Mother Nature did the rest. It worked out great in the end. She was pretty worried about money and school at first when the reality hit her that she was actually pregnant. But she gave birth a little more than a year after they got married and then after their oops, they decided to go ahead and try for their second since she was taking time off from school anyway. I'd love to tell her how I was her fairy godmother who sprinkled her with baby dust but don't want to damage our relationship. She's really happy and like I said, their second was planned but I know she would have waited a few years to finish school otherwise. I had a bursary that only gave me three pound 10 pence a day for lunch, but the food at school was expensive. A 500 milliliter bottle of water was two pounds. A bowl of macaroni was three pounds, five pence. My mom was a university student as well as a mom to four kids. So I wasn't mad at her in any way for not being able to provide food every day, but I felt like I had no other choice but to steal food. I used to grab something like a chicken wrap, slip it into the inside pocket of my blazer whilst facing away from the cashiers, then walk out as if I didn't buy anything. I did this for about three weeks straight and I didn't realize until the last day. The cashier didn't say much and let me go. I didn't do it again and after that day because the guilt made me lose my appetite. It's been four years and I still feel bad about it to this day. I, 19, have begun my undergrad studies last year. I come from a working class family and we haven't inherited any wealth and lived pretty much paycheck to paycheck till I left for college. My dad works extremely hard to provide for me and my family and so does my mom. My dad then gave me around 7,000 euros before I started college this year to help me with my rent, insurance and food. That is supposed to last me a whole year as student dorms are pretty cheap here and my uni fees has already been paid for. I started gambling around three months ago with 7,000 euros in my account. It only started as a fun thing to do with friends. I lost around 300 euros in the first week and thought I'll leave the gambling for good. However, I just wanted to get back whatever I lost and leave and so it began. It spiraled out of control and I was losing money every day. It got so bad that I'd spend my whole day on the gambling website trying to just make back whatever I lost. I wasn't having fun doing it. I had to do it because I couldn't ask my dad for any more money as he was already under a massive debt and couldn't be burdened with any more stress. And finally it came. The day I'd been dreading since the beginning. I couldn't deposit any more money in the gambling site. I was devastated and still am. I didn't have the heart to do it, but I had to ask my dad for more money. I lied to him about what happened to the money. I told him I'd have access to it in a few weeks. He trusted me and sent me 2,000 euros more. I just wanted to make back whatever I lost and try to gamble again. Then I fucked up big time. I lost all the money again yesterday when I blew it all up gambling. I'm planning to come clean to my dad. I don't know how he's going to take it. It will break his trust and disappoint him a lot. I'm terrified of what's going to happen after I tell him. I destroyed my social life the past few months. I've been on gambling sites like a degenerate all day long and I ignored my friends. I feel malnourished as I don't even have enough money to eat thrice a day. This is the first time I'm sharing this and I wanted this burden off my chest. Just please don't gamble with anything more than the amount you can lose. It broke me apart after all that and I don't know what I'm going to do now. I hope I can make it up to my dad. He's my hero and the fact that I did it to such a pure person breaks my heart. When I was about six, so around 20 years ago, my dad remarried and I had a stepmom. I loved her, but my real mom hated her guts. Like whenever they had to drop me off or pick me up, there would be an argument and sometimes the cops would be called. And every time I was at my mom's house, she would ask if my stepmom was nice and if I could say yes, my mom would get mad at me. So that year I broke my arm and I had a cast. I was at my mom's house that night and she asked me if my stepmom was nice and I said yes. Then my mom started to yell at me because she thought I was lying. To stop her from yelling, I told her the fattest lie and she believed it. I said that when I was getting a piece of cheese, I accidentally knocked over her phone in the sink and it broke. So then my stepmom grabbed my broken arm and twisted it and my mom believed it. So that week my mom got a restraining order placed on my stepmom for a whole month. So she had to stay away from me for a whole month. When I was 39 weeks, four days pregnant, I went into my doctor's office for my last checkup. 
I was being watched carefully for high blood pressure, and on this day it wouldn't go down even after drinking water and laying on my left side for a while. My doctor decided to send me to the hospital to be induced. I spent the next five days in labor, trying every induction method beside Cytotec. Nothing was working, even after manually opening my cervix up to four centimeters, and I suspect this might be due to the magnesium drip I was also on for my blood pressure. In the end, I ended up having a C-section. Now, the hospital I was delivering at was a baby-friendly hospital, meaning the babies roomed in with the mother. The nursery was completely shut down unless a baby needed medical help. This also meant that there was no one available to take your baby if you needed to shower or sleep or anything else. My son's father worked overnights and wouldn't take off any time after the birth either. So, there I was as a first-time mom, 36 hours out from having major surgery and still on meds to lower my blood pressure. I was also taking Amitriptylin for insomnia, which the nurse dispensed to me. It was the middle of the night and my son started to cry. I picked him up and we sat down in a chair and I put him on my chest. I must have passed out because I suddenly woke up to my baby on the cold hard floor of our hospital room. I picked him up and checked him over and he seemed fine. I was especially worried about his head but didn't notice any abnormalities and he never developed any bruises or anything. At the time, I know I should have told someone. I didn't because I was so afraid that he would be taken from me. I was so afraid anyone would think I was unfit or couldn't be trusted. I never told my son's father because he was abusive and this was something that would put me at risk to his wrath. So, I never told anyone. I'm deeply ashamed about it. The mom guilt I have feels crushing sometimes. My son is five years old now and pretty healthy but struggles with some aspects of speech. I always worry if the fall affected his brain in any way and maybe that's why he struggles with speech. Logically, I know the hospital and my ex failed me when I really shouldn't have been left alone, but I'm just not sure if this guilt will ever leave me.